Hey, what's going on? I'm Kevin Kenny. Welcome to a brand new edition of Billboard in Studio. And our guest, Mr. Jake Miller. What's up? What's going on, man? Nothing, man. How you doing? I'm doing well. I just enjoyed your performance on Billboard Live. You gave us Thank three so songs. Yes. And you played my favorite song off of your album. Yeah, or you were you, telling you, me. What are you calling it? It's an project? album. It's an album. Yeah. I like that. But it gets thank so, you so confusing much, these days with what to call these bodies of work. Yeah, but. normally if it has like five songs or less, it's like an EP. If it has right. like eight songs or more. But I wanted to, uh, this is my first independent album in a long yeah. time. So right when I left the label, I was like, I just want to kind of give the fans like a lot of music. Yeah. And so I was like, let's put out an album. And this is like an all Jake Miller project. You produced yeah. on it. You wrote it. You obviously performing on it. Yeah. But um, I'll get to the album in a second. I got it. When tour's on sale, by the way, too, let's get that out of the yes. way. Tour, right now, as you're watching this at home, you can go out. And, if it's not sold out already, because some of these cities. New York is sold out. Um, Hamden, Connecticut is sold out. Chicago's about to be, I think. I'm not really sure. Go check. And just for context, we're talking like this has been on sale for like minutes now. Yeah. Like maybe a matter of hours <laughs> yeah. and it's already selling but out. But I would love so. to see you guys there. By the time uh, by the time I go on tour, I'll have a lot of new music out and it's going to be a great time. So if you're watching this right now, hit and run tour. It's going to be sick. JakeMiller.com going all over the country. So you better be there. Absolutely. And we'll get into more details uh, in just a little bit on tour. But I got to talk to you about this year you've had. It's been a heck of a year for you. It's been fun. And you know what's funny? I talked to you for like a second on one of those red carpet deals like last December at Jingle Ball. Okay. And so when I was like I was hearing about your year. I was like, God, that must have all kickstarted like right after I last spoke with you. And I'm, there's so many things happening. You know, you went independent this year. You mm-hmm. you exited a long term relationship. Yeah. You learned how to produce. You know, you made this independent record. But I'm trying to understand like the process of everything. So take us back for the fans at home that may not be familiar. What happened first? You you exited this it's eight year relationship. Yeah. So I was in a relationship for a long time. You know, we just uh, mutually kind of split for a little bit. Uh, we just wanted to kind of see what else is out there and just kind of do our own thing and grow. Yeah. And, you know, we were together for so long. So we wanted to kind of find our, you know, who we are as, a, as opposed to like us together and being attached. We kind of kind of got to figure out our own identity and got to figure some things out. So, um, yeah, I mean, that sparked obviously a lot of thoughts and emotions that I wrote a lot of songs about, which, which I'm grateful for, you know, a lot of a lot of good things that come with negative situations. Yeah. Um, so I turned all that negative energy into music and I had a lot of fun doing it. And I think a lot of the fans loved it and can relate to it. And that's what it's all about, you know, Yeah. spreading positivity, even out of bad situations. That, I'm, dude, it gave us a hell of an album in uh, yeah, 2 a.m. in LA, which is really cool. Yeah. So y- you exit this relationship and then you moved to LA because you moved to Los Angeles for the first time ever this year too, right? No, I moved to LA about three years ago. Oh, you did? Yeah, okay. I've been here for, I've been, oh here, I thought we were in LA for a little bit. I've been in LA for, yeah, three years now. Okay. Um, I'm about to get my first house, I, I think. No way, yeah. congratulations, Thank you so man. much. I'm not buying, I'm just renting, but yeah, I need to get out of my huge. apartment because I'm getting a noise complaints every night from producing. Oh so. Well, you're producing in the apartment. Yeah, and it's, and it's really loud too, so I can understand, but it's like, I need to get out of there. Well, that's one of the coolest things about being an independent an artist and having full control is like you, you know, I know you've said in past interviews, you dream of melodies, you know, you'll wake up with a melody in your head and it's like when you're, when you're an independent artist and you have that freedom, you can get out of bed and two feet away is your microphone. Yeah, literally. It's I mean, crazy. that's, I haven't been in like an actual recording studio, um, since I left the label, um, how it used to be, I would wake up, I would check my email and I would get an email from the label. They would say, this is the address of the studio. These are the people you're working with and go make a nice song. Yeah. Now it's like, if I don't feel like making a song, if I do feel like making a song, like it's all, it's not homework, you know, making music is not homework. You got to wait until you're inspired, which now like almost 24 seven, I'm feeling inspired. So I can always sit down and make music, but you know, sometimes you're not. So it's like going to the studio when you're not in the mood to write a song, that's, that's just like shooting yourself in the foot because yeah. it's like no, no good music is going to come out of something no. that's forced. So yeah, I mean my mic stand, my keyboard, everything is two feet away from my bed, like you said, which is why I put uh, the album cover. I don't know uh, if anybody's seen the album cover, but there's a bed in the middle of Los Angeles. And that's a of, real shot. That's a real shot. We, we, I rented a U-Haul van. I took a bed. I put it in the middle of the street in downtown LA and it's kind of just symbolism. I spent a lot of time in my bedroom in the last two years, just practicing and thinking and writing and yeah. Well, talk, I wanted to ask about the title and the symbolism behind it. Is this like, a, is there a story that happened at 2 a.m. in L.A.? Or is that when you really were making music? That's when I was making pretty much all the music because, you know, going through a breakup, 2 a.m. in L.A., I felt like a lot of the times it was Friday night or Saturday night and I just kind of found myself, you know, not going out, staying home. And it would be, you know, 12 or 1 or 2 and I would see on Snapchat all my friends are out partying and I'm just sitting there, you know, playing the keyboard or writing songs. So it's like... A lot of stuff happened after 2 a.m. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like some good things, some bad things, some, you know, 
just me laying in bed and, you know, kind of thinking, but mm-hmm. all of, all of the songs are kind of stories or experiences or thoughts that I had late night at, yeah. at, in LA. So, well, not only is your, you know, your microphone and where you record two feet from your bed, but also where you're making these beats, which is new yeah. for you. You, yeah. uh, I've heard just went to, I guess, guitar center or some store, just got, got the program and learned it. Like, you know, just went yeah. hard watching YouTube tutorials. Yeah. I've been watching a lot of YouTube stuff. Um, I mean, the, the most basic thing that you need to know how to do to produce, in my opinion, is play the piano, which I never knew how to do before last year. Um, so I've, you know, I've been going on YouTube typing in any random song every day, just trying to, you know, learn like a verse or a chorus of any, any song. And, um, just now I'm kind of at the point where I can freestyle on the piano and, you know, kind of mess around with chords and make up my own songs on the piano. So that's kind of the basic, uh, like the start for me where I, where I was like, okay, cool. I think I'm actually going to be pretty good at producing. Yeah. And I've been learning every day. I have my friend Gary with me, helping me every day, write and produce. And I've just been learning a lot of stuff. And, um, I think by this time next year, you could put me up against any A-list producer and I'll make wow. something just as cool. That's so cool. You're just taken to it like that. Uh, off of the new album, 2AM in LA, what is the first beat or first song that we can enjoy as fans that was like the first beat you were really proud of? Can't Help Myself. Can't Help Myself. Yeah. Oh my gosh, really? Yeah, it's ironic because that's kind of like the opposite you know, feel from the rest of the album. I feel like I made that song and it was really happy. It was really upbeat and I loved it. I loved the drop. Um, but I'm like, this isn't really... Like it's me, but it, it wasn't really like how I was feeling at the mm-hmm. time. I was kind of feeling a, like, you know, a little emotional through the breakup. And so I was like, all right, cool. I'll make this, this the first song. I'll kick it off real nice. And then I'll kind of um, smooth my way into like, you know, the more authentic stuff talking about real, real subjects. Yeah. Well, let's yeah. talk about that song, the single, the video. I mean, you said it was epic on Billboard Live. That's an understatement, man. This is like a movie. Yeah. I thought this was like a preview for some summer blockbuster when I first saw this. Uh, no, I'm not going to lie. Video. I think it looks like a movie as well. I'm, Seriously, I'm not ashamed you're like to say an action it, star. You're an action <laughs> you. hero in this movie. Thank Can you. Can you talk about the concept? Yeah. So uh, me and my two roommates, they are amazing directors and videographers. And um, one of them, Edgar, does all my videos. Um, the other one, Chris, does a bunch of amazing special effects like bullets and fire and explosions and all that stuff. And so between the three of us with my music and our ideas and them doing the videos, like I don't need anybody besides them. And so I took, you know, a few, a few bucks and we went to a, you know, a dope wardrobe place, a dope prop place. We searched everywhere up and down, finding all these like fake guns and fake blood and fake, you know, dead skeletons and all this crazy stuff. We, we, the first scene in the music video, if you go watch it, I'm like hiking in like these dunes. Yo, where was that? So, I don't even know what it's called, honestly. I'm never going back. It was the worst day of my life. <laughs> but that shot was literally 10 seconds in the video. And we drove three hours to get there and then hiked two hours to get there. Wow. And then back two hours and then drove three hours. And meanwhile, I'm in my full leather oh, yeah. jacket, uniform, and it's burning hot. It's not like there's a path. We're literally walking in like deep, like dune sand. It was the worst day of my life, truly. Oh, my god! But gosh. when the video came out. dedication to your craft. Yeah, it was crazy. And it was like two days before tour. Oh so gosh. like for the first full week of tour, I had like sand in my hair and in my eyes and in my ears. It was terrible. That's but crazy. the video turned out good. So I would do it again, I guess. And there's a, I say it's a movie, not just because it's visually uh, so breathtaking, but there's a story to it. I think it's yeah. really cool where you say, I don't want to spoil it, but you know, you say yeah. love interest and maybe some roles are reversed there. And exactly. I mean, the whole point of it is like, you see, I, th- I think I'm the only man left in the world. Mm-hmm. Um, I drive by this girl who's chained up. Obviously she's in danger. I'm probably getting myself into a bad situation if I rescue her, but I can't help myself because she's gorgeous and I want her. And uh, yeah, you got to go watch it and see how it ends. I get myself in a bad situation. and <laughs> It's a really cool, uh, it's a little twist. Now, another song that uh, I do love and I mentioned it before is Palm Boulevard. And you played it for us here at Billboard. Me too, feel real love. Give my dad a hug. Call all my friends up. Cause I'm on my way. I'm on my way home. You saying you're singing that song that you had this dream of a 12 year old you telling you to leave Los Angeles or yeah. leave LA. Is that a true story? You had that dream? No, I didn't. But I mean, like you know, the the younger me sometimes I just like kind of see pictures of me when I was younger, or like pictures of me and my friends when we were younger, and it's like it's a completely different life, you know, that I have now. And it's yeah. not like I don't love this life. It's just like things were so easy back then, and like things were just like 
there was there was nothing to worry about. Obviously, like anybody can, you know, feel the same way and relate. But it's like when I think of Palm Boulevard in Florida and, you know, that age, like 12 and just yeah. like going outside the day after a hurricane and like razor and taking my little razor and like going through all the water, like the water's up to our knees and like nothing to worry about except for like maybe doing homework like that. Those were just like the best times. Those are the best. The best. And so like, um, yeah, the song is just about not really forgetting those times and forgetting all those people and the places that kind of made me who I am. Yeah. yeah. Well, let's get to tour because this is what I'm really excited <coughs> to talk about. The Hit and Run Tour. It's kicking off April 13th next year. Again, tickets are already on sale and not only just on sale, they're selling out. Like you yes. got to get out. We're not, we're not just, this isn't just a call to action right now. You got to go. If you want to see Jake to. live and in person, now is the time to head over to your social media and uh, where else can they get tickets actually? Let's just jakemiller.com. It's super oh, easy. Perfect. Jakemiller.com. Yeah. They got tickets there, VIP, um, everything. Yeah. Go get them. I really want to see you guys there at the shows. Now, what are you going to do differently this time out than maybe anything you've done in the past? Do you sort of come up with new concepts when you hit the road every time? Uh, for sure. I mean, it's very important as an artist to always keep switching it up, always, you know, stay creative. Um, besides from the music being different, the music will be different on the store because I'll probably have a full album out by then. Wow. Definitely will just because I've been working my ass off. But, um, you know, I'll, I'll think of little things, you know, to do where I can get either the fans involved or bring fans on stage or even if it's not actually during the show, maybe, you know, do something before or after the show or around the city. I don't know. I haven't thought of it yet, but yeah. I'll make sure that it's creative and it's fun and the fans love it. Well, one of the creative things you've already announced, at least in two tour stops, are these acoustic, is it evenings with Jake Miller? Yeah. Yeah, these are cool. I mean, yeah. I love your acoustic stuff, and you dropped Thank the you. acoustic version of the album, uh, an EP version, I think about a month ago, which is great. What, talk about these nights. I think one of them is already sold out in Hamden, Connecticut, but you got another yes. one in Chicago, maybe? Yeah, so it was funny because um, this last tour, the only show that I've... I've never canceled a show before being sick or anything. I've never had to cancel a show. And one of the last shows of this last tour, I was super sick and I didn't want to cancel it. So I was like, all right, cool, Jacksonville. Like, if you just like bear with me, I don't want to cancel the show, but I'm going to do a whole acoustic show. And um, half of the songs that we did that night, we've never even done before. It was completely on the fly. People were like screaming out, you know, song titles. We were just doing them on the fly. I was really impressed with my guitar player because he was just like busting them out after never even like practicing. But um, we got off stage and we were like, that was like the most fun show of the entire tour. Like we should actually make that into something. So some of these off days on this tour, we decided we didn't want to spend, you know, just going, hanging on the bus. We want to actually make something out of it. So they're called Evening with Jake Miller shows, all acoustic. It's only like a hundred people for each show. Wow. Um, I want people, I haven't really announced it yet, but like I want people to come like dressed up. Not okay. like black tie, but like. Oh, like a little classy evening. I'm like, I'm an, I think I'm gonna wear a suit. Really? Yeah, I would love for people to come in like dresses and heels and as dressed up as you can get. Okay. Um, just kind of make it more of like a cool piano loungy intimate yeah, experience. And you know, it's just gonna be very laid back. I'm gonna be talking to the fans. They can scream out, you know, what songs they want me to play. And it's just very casual. And I think it's gonna be really cool. That is like a fan's dream come true, how yeah. interactive that show sounds. That's probably why it's sold out in like an yeah, hour. Seriously, that's amazing. <laughs> now, you mentioned piano. You learned piano this year. Are we gonna see you on the keys on tour? I want to, yeah. That's something that would be different. I've never done that um, live, but I definitely want to do that, yeah. Wow. Again, court, uh, tour, I should say, kicks off April 13th. Tickets are now available, and the record is out, and it's really tremendous. 2 Thank you so LA. much. Jake, thanks so much for stopping by, man. Thank Put you, it man. There. Appreciate it. Thanks for watching, guys.